5 a.m., September 26, 2024. After three days of testing, SpaceX announces that they're going to be conducting a wet dress rehearsal of the full stack at their facility at Boca Chica. But what actually happens is something entirely different. Before the major airlines begin their flights for the day, before there's any sort of considerable commercial air traffic in the area, and without any permission being asked, Starship lifts off. Having access to all of the orbital traffic and space debris information, Starship manages to achieve orbit without any difficulties, and then in a frenzy, the FAA notifies the rest of the world that Starship is due to re-enter somewhere over the Indian Ocean in about 45 minutes. Meanwhile, spectators at South Padre Island and Port Isabel alike watch with disbelief as Booster B-12 descends towards the chopsticks, heading for an uncertain future as SpaceX employees and spaceflight enthusiasts alike hold their breath, wondering what is about to happen. Not just to Starship, but to Elon Musk, who is about to have a warrant sworn out for his arrest. So is the admittedly crazy scenario that I've just laid out for you at all possible? Well, it would require that lots of SpaceX employees be in on the whole thing because a wet dress rehearsal and a launch are two very different things and lots of people at SpaceX would be aware of what was about to happen before it actually did happen and it would require that all of them keep their mouths shut. Again, not impossible, but very, very difficult. And what could even Elon Musk possibly hope to gain by pulling a stunt like this, because even if the entire test went as planned, chances are it'd be a long time before the government would allow Starship to lift off again, and Elon Musk would also have to bail himself out of jail and hire himself some very good attorneys. Then again, if Trump were to end up getting elected, chances are the president would issue a presidential pardon for Elon Musk and he would have no further issues. This could be just the test of power and authority that Elon is looking for, and perhaps just paying a massive fine would be the price of doing business to get Starship operational more swiftly. Well, I have to admit, all of this sounds a little unlikely, but at the same time, what exactly is SpaceX doing right now? Why stack Starship this far in advance of a potential launch in late November. It's going to be at least two months before the FAA is going to issue a launch license. Why carry out West dress rehearsals this far ahead of time? Is there something else that SpaceX might be hoping to accomplish at this point? Well, yes, actually there are some other things that SpaceX could do short of a full-fledged Flight 5. Keep in mind that Flight 4 went well enough to where the FAA did not require any sort of mishap report, an investigation, anything. The FAA were perfectly content to issue another launch license for a repeat of Flight 4 without any sort of significant delay whatsoever. And what would SpaceX hope to gain by repeating Flight 4? Well, because it didn't go 100% smoothly, there were some things about that flight that were a little less than optimal. For example, the loss of a Raptor engine on the way up, as you just saw, and also the loss of another Raptor engine during the landing procedure, an explosive loss of that engine, something that SpaceX actually edited out of this recap that you're watching right now. But for the sake of completeness, I've actually 
actually put that footage back in. I'll go ahead and put in some captions at the moment that the re-edited footage comes back into play. So, in any event, if something happened during the landing process that we don't know about right now, a fire, an RUD, something along those lines, then yeah, probably a good idea to try to see if we can get a water landing accomplished a bit better before we actually try the chopsticks capture. And that is something that SpaceX could try to accomplish with a modified Flight 5 that doesn't attempt to capture landing before we actually proceed to the full thing. Could also reassure the FAA, and who knows, perhaps this is even part of a compromise that the FAA is working out right now, to reassure the various environmental agencies that might be a little bit on a hair trigger at the moment that a re-entry over Boca Chica Beach and a capture attempt is not going Going to put the wildlife refuges that are so close to this launch facility in any kind of jeopardy. And in case you need a visual reminder as to just how crazy close these refuges are, here's the Starbase Launch Facility and here's the Lower Rio Grande Valley Wildlife Refuge. I still maintain that these facilities are way too close to protected refuges to ever be a good place to carry out an upgraded launch cadence. Maybe a couple tests every now and then, but more than two dozen launches per year? doesn't make a great deal of sense to me. Let me give you another visual idea of just how close all of this actually is. Here's Starship and its launch facility, and by the way, here's the capture tower and the wildlife refuge is right here. And by the way, Mexico is right over here. So we are close to not only Starship debris creating a problem with a wildlife refuge, but also possibly creating an international incident because Mexican onlookers gather right over in this area, ridiculously close to the launch facility. And keep in mind, the FAA is now not the only agency that's involved with all of this. Now that a capture attempt has put these sensitive areas at risk, a number of environmental agencies who are not so inclined to get aerospace development underway as rapidly as possible, now these people are involved and they could care less how long it takes Starship to lift off again. I'm rather surprised that they allowed a lift off as rapidly as they did after the debacle of the first launch. And in case you think I'm overreacting when it comes to the potential of a Booster 12 exploding over both Kachika, well, look at the debris and remnants of Booster 11 that, interestingly enough, were just fished off the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. Interesting timing for all of this, but this does not look like a booster that peacefully settled onto its side after a soft landing in the Gulf. Now, granted, it could have just exploded after falling over, as many boosters are wont to do, but at the same time, it may have exploded under other circumstances as well, and now they are retrieving the debris to get more information on all of this once again before they allow another booster to fly over Boca Chica and potentially over these sensitive areas. Again, I really don't think that we are seeing any sort of power play from the FAA. I think we're seeing the FAA with its hands tied right now with environmental agencies that have already fined SpaceX and maybe looking at this entire region and the FAA for that matter through a microscope. The FAA needs to mind their P's and Q's do everything by the book, and if that includes a 60-day consultation with various agencies every time SpaceX makes a modification to their flight plan, no matter how small, then that's what the FAA is going to do. But here's the good news. Once the FAA 
NSA does complete this investigation, let's assume that SpaceX doesn't fly at all, not even repeat a Flight 4 until late November. Once that gets carried out, I am certain that it isn't going to go smoothly. I'm positive that it's going to require several catch attempts before SpaceX has that process mastered, and they're going to have to repeat Flight 5 over and over again, something that they'll be able to do as long as it goes as expected, as long as an exploding booster doesn't rain debris into a protected area, they should be able to carry out repeat after repeat of Flight 5 until they finally get that process mastered. And if they can actually master the catch attempt, or at least determine if catching the booster is a good idea at all, that is a major step forward to the kind of launch cadence that we're going to need to carry out 10 refueling missions and a lunar starship launch to get Artemis 3 on the books. I am confident that a few years from now, we're barely going to remember this FAA delay as Starship accomplishes greater and greater things until it completely revolutionizes space travel in our solar system. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I would also like to thank the following incredible people, Michael Fireberg and Rod Baller on PayPal for helping me get here to Cape Canaveral. Avril, where I currently am right now actually, preparing you to bring you all the details of Crew 9, along with Owen Densmore, who recently decided to support me on Patreon. And keep in mind, guys, I now have a library of eight exclusive videos available to my Patreon subscribers, with another video being added this week, so stay tuned for that. And if you'd like to join these folks, all the details are in the description. So until next time, stay angry about space.